There are two basic types of wind instruments. They're called an open pipe and a closed pipe wind instrument. Now, an open pipe instrument is open on both ends. A closed pipe instrument is open on one end and closed on the other. A closed pipe wind instrument is not closed on both ends. <laughs> An instrument closed on both ends is called a drum. I love drums, I have nothing against drums, but it's not a wind instrument. Okay? So when we refer to an open pipe and a closed pipe, we're referring to the second end. It's one of the ends of the An open end creates an antinode. And a closed end creates a node. So this is a visual of an open pipe organ. And you can see we have antinodes on either end. And one thing you should be able to recognize is that for this first one, we have half a wavelength here. That means for this first one that we're going to have the overall length is equal to half of a wavelength. For the second one, we have a full wave here, so the wavelength is equal to L. And for this one, we have one and a half wavelengths is equal to L. It's exactly the same. For an open pipe instrument, we actually get the exact same equations. So this equation right here is for a string instrument, but it is also for an open pipe. If we close one end, we have a closed pipe instrument, we have an antinode at one end and a node at the other end. In this particular case, this is actually only a quarter of the wavelength, which is equal to L. This is three-fourths of the wavelength is equal to L, and this is five-fourths of the wavelength is equal to L. So I'm not going to walk through the equations for that one, but for a closed pipe instrument, The equation works out like this. Frequency equals m times v over 4l, where again, m is called the harmonic number, but you only have the odd integers, odd positive integers for a closed pipe. Only the odd harmonics exist for a closed pipe instrument. I have an instrument. It's open on both ends. This makes it an open pipe instrument. Well, I could play my instrument like this. <laughs> now, when I spin it faster, that changes the frequency, it increases the frequency at which the air vibrates at the end. which changes the harmonic, which changes what we interpret as the pitch. Right? So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up standing waves inside this instrument. Now, if you recall, when I set up the standing wave demonstration in front of you, you could see that it only worked at certain frequencies could we set up standing waves. You can hear that with this. Only at certain frequencies do we get a standing wave, and therefore do we hear a pitch. At the frequencies in between there, I don't set up a standing wave, so you don't hear the sound, the pitch, coming from this instrument. That's not the only instrument I keep in the room. That's a very big instrument. <laughs> I also have this one, which I like to keep around. Hi, Pooja. <laughs> what type of instrument is this one? An open instrument? 
It's an open pipe instrument. Does everyone? Oh, hi, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Emily. <laughs> so, what we are going to do is we are going to figure out the harmonics of this instrument. <laughs> I have taken some measurements. We know the length of this instrument is 2.375 meters. Now, the truth of the matter is that with all wind instruments, the length, the physical length of the instrument is not enough because a small portion of the air actually vibrates outside the instrument and that is dependent on the diameter of the pipe itself. So we need to add, we need to adjust the length of the pipe by a certain amount, and that equation is the length adjusted is equal to the original length plus 0 0.4 times the diameter of the pipe times 2 because this is an open pipe instrument and it has two ends. If it were a closed pipe instrument, we would only multiply it by 1 because it would only have one. The diameter of this is 0 0.136 meters. That means that the length adjusted is equal to 2.375 plus 0 0.4 times 0 0.136 times 2. The adjusted length of this pipe. Please. meters. Okay, that's one thing that we need. We also need the speed of sound in air because that's the medium through which this uh, sound is traveling, this wave is traveling. So how, what do we need in order to figure that out? Dana? Figure out the, the speed of sound. Oh, we need the temperature? We need the temperature. So it's 331 plus 0 0.6 times the temperature in degrees Celsius. The temperature in degrees Celsius, don't you worry, I have thermometer. Is looks like about two point uh, twenty-two point eight degrees Celsius. Twenty-two point eight degrees Celsius. So the speed of sound in air is three thirty-one plus zero point six times twenty-two point eight. Which is three hundred forty-four point six eight. Meters per second. Uh, meters per second, because that's the velocity. Okay. Um, let's see. So now we're going to use the equation for an open pipe instrument, which was frequency equals n, the harmonic number times the velocity, the speed of sound, divided by 2L. The first harmonic is going to be 1 times the speed of sound, which we just figured out, 344.68, divided by 2 times the length, which we just got, 2.48. The first harmonic or the fundamental frequency for this tube, this open pipe instrument. Sixty-nine point three eight five six. Okay, so with six we'll go with sixty-nine hertz. No, you got that right. What? That's it. I thought it was the two. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, so now we're going to figure out the second harmonic. The second harmonic, again, is n times v over 2L, but it's just replacing it with a 2. So 2 times 344.68 divided by 2 times 2.4838. But I want you to notice something, which is this piece right here is the fundamental frequency. In other words, the second harmonic is just 2 times the first harmonic. Same is going to be true for the third harmonic, right? The third harmonic is just going to be 3 times the first harmonic, and the fourth, and so on and so forth. So we just take 2 and multiply it by our 69.3856. The frequency equals? 34.6928. 2, did you divide by 2? Yeah. Multiply. 138.77. 138.77. 
138.77. We'll go with two sig figs, approximately 140 hertz. Is the second harmonic. Now, we're going to play our instrument. Ooh. I need help. Uh, you're all going to end up standing, so just stand up. I need those two lab stools set up upside down to hold this up right here. I'll put that over there and just push this. Lip. Yep, just like that, upside down. Oh, this way. Okay. All right, so what we have here, if you recall, is we have our musical instrument. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the frequency uh, that we're going to have going into the musical instrument. And what you're going to hear, hopefully, is if we start down at 20 hertz up here, there we go, that's it. So what's happening right now is these guys are moving back and forth at 20 times per second. But remember, a standing wave won't get set up in this um, open pipe instrument until we get to about 69 hertz. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the frequency until we get to, and it's right about there that you can actually hear. Do you hear how? It's actually you can hear it a little better if you're over there. But you can hear how right around. Here, we've set up a standing wave in there, and if I pass by there, it actually goes away a little bit. So it's right around, well, maybe there. That seems pretty good, too. Um, part of the issue is, remember, the last time this was calibrated was 1966. It's amazing the things you guys remember. 1966, so it might not, the frequency might not be perfect. But the thing here is that if you take, Andrew, you put your hand in the end here, can you feel the vibration? You're just right at the end. So what you should do is you should make make sure you take your hand 